This time on Snowmobiler Television, we're here in North Bay, Ontario to start our three-day RAN tour, the ride around Nipissing that'll take us all the way around the lake. Then later in the show, we're going to catch up with the president of the CCSO, the Canadian Council of Snowmobile Clubs, to talk about snowmobile trails and staying on them. STV is brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Polaris, think outside. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of pickup trucks for 56 years. Tough, smart, capable. The RAN Tour stands for Ride Around Nipissing, which is a network of trails that'll take a rider, well, all the way around Lake Nipissing. Now, typically, this is a three or four day adventure, depending on how far and how fast you like to ride. For us, we're gonna do it in three days, with our home base being here at the Best Western in North Bay, where we're gonna leave the truck and trailer as we go all the way around the lake. Now, any minute now, we're gonna get our poop in a group, and we're gonna be off. When you run it out need to get unstuck, so when you rub against the wall and you cannot fall, so go on, go on. The RAN is typically done as a saddlebag tour and hotels along the route, wherever you choose to start the adventure, will let you leave your trucks and trailers behind as you do the loop, as long as you spend at least one night at their location. Our crew arrived here in North Bay yesterday evening, so we could get a good start to the trip after a night's rest. For our tour, we'll be taking a counterclockwise direction around the lake over the three days we expect to be out on the loop. The best western here in the bay is located on the shores of Lake Nipissing, so it doesn't take long to get the first glimpse of the lake we'll be riding around. At over 870 square kilometers, Lake Nipissing is Ontario's third largest lake within Ontario's borders. Interestingly though, even though this tour is called Ride Around Nipissing, this bit outside North Bay riding from the hotel is really the only time we'll ride on or even see the lake again until our return trip back to the trucks parked at the Best Western. Now there are opportunities to get back to the lake if you choose to get off the designated RAN route and spend time on additional club trails located around the lake, especially in the western and southern portions of the tour. With the RAN taking riders through 11 different club zones, there's plenty of trails available if you want to add time and distance to this experience. Our three-day route, with overnight stops in Sturgeon Falls and Port Loring, will be right around 400 kilometers and is the most direct route around the tour. Now, knowing the areas we'll be riding in, it would be easy to add days and distance to this trip on some of the most scenic trails in Ontario. The RAN Tour is a, is a good two to three day adventure that basically takes you around Lake Nipissing, various places to start, North Bay, French River, takes you through West Nipissing, St. Charles, Nipissing Vivre area, back through the Loring area, various degrees of different uh, topography, the farm fields in West Nipissing, you know, the forests in around North Bay, you've got the French River area which is unique to itself. The French and Pickerel River bridges are, are alone are, uh, are worth the tour. Two, three days you can do it. You could probably do it in two days if you just wanted to ride, but if you actually wanted to enjoy and make it into a four or five day, you could stop in any one of the, say the Argyle area in, in the Port Loring area. They have numerous clubs trails that you could do day loops and spend your time and enjoy the area before you get back on and finish your tour. A couple of years ago, uh, at the end of the year, the OFSC rated the different tours that's in the province and all the feedback that we had on the RAN tour is very positive. Everybody that did it enjoyed it. If you're coming up to do the RAN tour, I would say, don't want to be prejudiced, but North Bay does have a lot of amenities and I mean we are right situated on the lake and there's numerous hotels along the lake, adequate parking it would, to my mind, would be a good, good hub to start the 
Highway 11 North is four laned all the way up here, so it's easy easy to get here. And there's numerous accommodations along the strip at Lakeshore Drive. To me, it would be a great place to start. Leaving North Bay, you're actually on a on a, an AD trail, which is a major trail. And for the most part, uh, you run into a few club trails, but really, there's not a lot of difference. They get the same amount of grooming. The fact that it's on a tour loop, you try to, to make to make sure that it's up to snuff in, on any given day. So basically you're you're on a similar trail. This is a tour route and we're promoting it and everybody's got to do their part to make sure the signage is up and so people can have a safe ride without it getting lost and to ensure that the grooming's done so everybody enjoys their ride. It takes coordination amongst the clubs to, to keep up the grooming. It takes a lot of volunteer effort on behalf of the clubs to maintain the trails, given that you know you, you lose the odd trail along and you have to reroute. So you have to basically take a trail and, and basically turn it into your, your tour trail. And it, it's a lot of, lot of effort on behalf of the volunteers of each club that actually make this happen. Leaving North Bay heading to Sturgeon Falls gets us on some of the more open and speedy trails that we'll see on this entire trip. This is also a fairly short day for us at slightly over 100 kilometers. Now this was more of a logistical distance for us for TV production as we took the most direct route there, mostly on the D-Trail. To bump up the distance to the overnight at the Comfort Inn, we could have easily taken the scenic route, taking a little wider arc out of North Bay and then heading up a little higher on the A-Trail towards Tomogamy before heading back south to Sturgeon Falls. If you were in, in started your tour in North Bay and wanted to do extra riding, there's, there's great riding out of North Bay to the Mattawa area. The Mattawa Bonfield North Bay Clubs support, uh, support a, a tour, just a local tour on club trails with 10 different stops. Uh, along the way, the uh, mica mine, which is a unique feature. There's a lookout in Redbridge. There's a lookout in uh, off the Bonfield cl Club trails. That's all an attraction to. Uh, we call it the Explorers Loop Tour. But there's ten ten different attractions along the way that you could basically spend a day ride and, and take in all of these attractions. Day two was our longest scheduled ride of the tour with right around 200 kilometers of trails ahead of us around the western end of the loop and on down to Port Loring. Looking at the map of the tour, the trail around this part of the Rand trip takes a pretty wide berth to the west of Lake Nipissing over to the sea trail right along Highway 69. You can cut the corner and ride down through Levine which gets you back down on Lake Nipissing for a good stretch, but no matter what trail you take, you'll have to pass through the one pinch point to cross the French River Bridge. The French River and the bridge that crosses it is the defining feature of our day two on the Rand Tour. Built in 2005, the bridge hangs 90 feet above the water and spans 512 feet across and is the largest snowmobile bridge of its kind in the world. It's even capable of holding the weight of a groomer. Now before the bridge, there was a trailer service that would portage riders across this otherwise impassable natural feature. The bridge across the French River is unique to itself, the fact it's 500 and some 50 feet long, uh, cable structure, it spans the river. It's, it's, it's Im impressive. It was put in years ago when the trails were being established. At that time, the, the, the highway to get across the river, you basically needed a bridge because that was the only way. You couldn't cross on, on the highway. So those, the, the bridge got put in some probably 20 years ago. And it's, it's a drawing card, not, not, not only in the winter, but it's in the summertime with the interpretive center right there. It's, it's a unique feature, it's worth, worth seeing. This part of the trail is also heavily influenced by the Rocky Canadian Shield. The trails definitely seem to be much tighter in this part of the tour as well, with plenty of elevation changes to keep things interesting. Now, average speeds are also down a bit, but the exceptional countryside makes up for the lack of pace. This part of the ride also has the most choice of different trail routes, both before and after the French River crossing point. 
However, our planned 200-ish kilometer day seems to be about right, and trying to expand the route too much in this part of the Rand Tour I think would be a mistake, especially after taking some extra time to sightsee at the French River Bridge. Our destination of Port Loring came into view late in the afternoon for our last overnight stay at the Northland Motel, where we could relax in a comfortable atmosphere, have an early dinner and an adult beverage to bring our second day on the Rand Tour to an end. If somebody takes the time to, to drive up to our area and do the Rand Tour, I'm sure they'll enjoy it. Coming up after the break, we're catching up with Brad Mann, the president of the Canadian Council of Snowmobile Clubs. This segment is brought to you by CKX. Snowmobiling is under threat. We are under the government microscope when it comes to the emissions of our snowmobiles and the impact that we have on the environment. Then we're under threat by the conservation movement that want to stop us from riding in certain areas because of the impact we're having on wildlife. We're also under threat from urban sprawl, where houses and businesses are standing now where we once rode snowmobiles. But perhaps the biggest threat of them all comes from within. And it's a simple one that we can solve all by ourselves. Just stay on the trail. It's been brought to us, it uh, first came up really out of Quebec. Uh, they had a lot of issues with a lot of farmers traveling through, so it became an issue there and then it came to the CCSO table and uh, we've had some issues here in New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, so everybody across Canada is really concerned about where it's going to go and uh, as you know the private landowners makes up a lot of our trail system and without them uh, it would mean that we'd have a lot of disconnect in our major trail system. When you lose a section of trail that uh, connects your whole trail system now you got to go searching, you got to go meet the landowner, see if you can work a deal out with him that he's going to be okay with everything. If not, now you got to go to another section of landowner, talk to that landowner, see if you can do the detour around there. And all this has to happen basically before July, before your map system comes out. Because that's another issue, if the map system says the trail goes one way and then you get there and all of a sudden the trail's not there, everybody depends on GPS's today to travel. So it's a major issue and it's a lot of extra work. It's not an easy problem to solve, but at the end of the day, you got to be smart about it. Uh, enjoy what we got and uh, manufacturers are making crossover sleds and you can still drive on the groomed trail system but respect the signage and respect the landowners that you're not out in the middle of their field tearing it all up and go to the areas that's designated for backcountry or off trail there's lots of them out there and we get it and we understand that the new generation come coming in the younger folks coming into the sport which we need to keep the sport going loves to buy these crossovers and backcountry and get out with their buddies and see how stuck they can get and take videos that's all fine, but make sure you do it in a designated area that's there to do it. Don't jeopardize the sport for your own fun for a few minutes. It's probably more important than ever that we respect the signage and stay on the groom trails and the landowner today, they're a little iffy whether they still want you to go buy your land. So we have to work with them and we have to respect it. It's their land at the end of the day. So you need to respect the signage, stay on their trails and uh, don't jeopardize the sport for 10 minutes of fun because you want to go out in a farmer's field and do a bunch of S's or do some wheelies. Go to the designated areas that's designed for that. There's lots of room for both in this sport. So just respect the laws and we'll be okay. Coming up after the break, we're headed back to the trails of the Rand Tour. This segment is brought to you by Woody's. Today is our third and final day of the Rand Tour. Yesterday was our biggest ride day and we put down right around 200 kilometers or so. Today is a little shorter with 100k to get back to North Bay and unfortunately, the end of this trip.
day three takes us through another area where there's plenty of trail options to expand the loop. This area, bordered by Georgian Bay to the west and Algonquin Park to the east, is absolutely filled with trails that can take riders south to centers like Perry Sound and Huntsville. Our route would take us northeast and back to the Calendar Bay area of Lake Nipissing. At this point, we'll be back on the lake to return to the Best Western. Now, it sure was difficult not to add more distance at this point, knowing how good the trails are in this area, but we're all going to be driving home this evening after the day's ride, and we didn't want to be too tired. If you have time, I would suggest staying one more night at whatever point you entered the RAN tour for that last evening. That way, you won't feel the pressure to get back to your vehicle to begin a multi-hour drive home at the end of a long ride day. Our ride experience of the Ride Around Nipissing tour left me thinking one thing, and that's there's so many options when it comes to making this trip. Now, the RAN tour itself is a great experience for any and all riders, and there's definitely a satisfaction in completing a tour loop like this one. But with all the exception areas to ride all around the tour, groups could easily add a day or two to this trip if they wanted to. With Tomogamy and Sudbury to the north and Perry Sound and Huntsville to the south, there are easy sub loops that can take you away from the RAN and back again, adding to this adventure. Now there would even be the ultimate figure eight ride for you hardcore sledders out there that would combine the RAN and the RAP tours together. The last few days on the RAN tour have been a great little sledding getaway. Our trip took us three days and we put on just over 400 kilometers on the sleds. Now, this is one tour I've now been able to check off my to-do list. Hopefully one day you'll get to check this tour off your list as well. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. So I'm positive you're going to get a real charge out of this Yamaha tip because it's all about boosting a sled when it's dead. Now, if you're at home, this is pretty easy. You can plug a charger into the wall and charge the battery up, or maybe use a set of automotive booster cables and charge it from your vehicle. Or you might have a booster pack like this one that'll get it fired, no problem. But out on the trail, it's a little different. Now you can bring a booster pack with you. They have small versions of these that are about the size of say two stack cell phones. They work very good by the way, but they're also very expensive and you have to remember to keep them charged. And then you could bring an automotive set of booster cables with you, but those things are big and cumbersome and will use up what precious cargo space you do have on your snowmobile. So here's another solution for you. Build yourself a little homemade charge cable. I'm not gonna call this a booster cable. What I did was go down to my automotive supply store, bought six feet of two wire 12 gauge cable and some cheapy medium duty, light duty alligator clips. All in, I'm less than $20 in this. The best thing, is you can roll it up nice and tight, store it with you on your sled. It'll easily fit in your dash glove box for those times you need to turn a negative battery situation into a positive one. <laughs> what? What, you didn't like that? You didn't like that pun? Oh my God. I don't know what you're talking about. Really, it's, it's a terminal issue I have with my puns. If I keep it up, they're gonna put me in jail. D-cell, I think. This segment is brought to you by iGrip Studs. After a couple of days riding on the RAN Tour, an adventure that takes us through multiple districts over multiple club trails, you really do get an appreciation of the amount of work it takes to be able to build a system where you can do a tour like this. Now, if it wasn't for the countless volunteers donating their time into the system, we wouldn't be able to ride like we do. It's precious and we need to thank them. That's why when one person rips a line off through a farmer's field, not only are we running the risk of losing that trail, we're also running the risk of losing a volunteer who's simply fed up that people simply can't follow the rules. Without the volunteers, we wouldn't have what we have today. That's a no brainer. That's definitely true. Uh, volunteers, it's getting a little harder and harder for volunteers. The, uh, the average age of the volunteers has been people that's been there for 30, 40 years, so they're getting up in age 70. So we have a little gap to work on to bring the younger generation in to fill that gap. Uh, we've got a little bit of work left to do there, and I think that's pretty well right across Canada in any organization. But uh, the volunteers have certainly made the sport, and uh, they're the biggest part of it, and uh, it's always fun. And make sure to thank them. That's the big thing. A lot of times you just take it for granted, but a thank you goes a long ways. Well, the neat thing about volunteering is how many people you meet in a run of a day. And everybody's different and you hear everybody's stories. So 
it's never two days the same because you're always dealing with different people. So it's a good experience and uh, the, the contacts you make and the people you meet from all over the world. Uh, I volunteer countless hours, I always have. And somebody said, well, why do you do that? Like you don't have any free time. Well, I enjoy what I'm doing and I'm glad to be able to give back and help out for the people that's laid it down for us when we started this sport. You know, uh, we often go into meetings or you'll be in a warm and hot and you hear the, the criticism of some, well, why didn't they do this, why didn't they do that? Well, I got a message for you guys out there. Everybody needs volunteers. And if you think you can do a better job, the door's wide open, we will never lock it on you. Come on out and help us make it better together. On behalf of everyone at OSM and STV, I want to thank volunteers across the snow belt for the time they dedicate to snowmobiling. Thanks for joining us this week on STV. On this show, we had a great trip around the Rand Tour, and we also had a good conversation with Brad, the president of the CCSO. But I wanted to end it with this. Over the last few days on nearly all the trails we rode, you could see that most letters have listened to the stay on trail message, but there was still a couple times I saw where people were cutting the corner off a trail, riding on the outside of the lines across obvious private property. The worst thing was, the very first orange post that they rode past on one of these sections had the stay on trail or permission revoke sign right on it. And it's not like you can hide the evidence, I mean we can see the track you made across private property. If you riders want to keep this up, we're going to lose trails. And if you want to go ride in the powder, go to where it's not trespassing and not threatening our trail systems. So until next time, please stay on the trail. Closed captioning is brought to you by Advanced Control Systems. STV has been brought to you by CKX, where your passion. Schaefer's. Specialized lubricants since 1839. Best Western Hotels and Resorts. Ready to get away? 